Welcome to a demo of how to automate your documents from Airtable using Docs Automator. We're here in Docs Automator in my account and I haven't created an automation yet. So that's the first thing we are going to do. I click on new automation. What we want to do today is we want to automate invoices. So I call this invoices 2023. We want to use Airtable. So as a data source, we are selecting Airtable here. I have already connected my Airtable account. Um, so if you haven't done so already, uh, please connect yours here. Um, when you do that, make sure that you give permissions to the basis that you want or the base that you want to use for automating your documents. Next step is to set your Google Doc template. We are using this invoice template that I have here, like a pretty standard invoice template. We have some client details over here. We have like an invoice date, service date, invoice number, due date, and then we have a line items table. So a table of products that we want to list on our invoices. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste this here in the Google Docs template URL box. It's going to give us a lot more options now. Uh, the first thing is to set our local settings. Local settings means dates and currencies are formatted according to the uh, regional settings that you give here. So currently there's English United States, but there's German, there's French, there are many, many different regions across the globe. The next step is to save the Google Doc or not. So by default, if this is toggled off, there's only a PDF coming out of this in the end. Uh, if you select save Google Doc here as well, and then a Google Doc will be saved in addition to the PDF. Next option is to override the attachment field. So you're setting an attachment field in Airtable. Um, and this basically says, shall that attachment field be overwritten with the latest PDF if a new one is created? Or shall Docs Automated just add to that attachment field? And that way you can, for instance, keep track of multiple documents you've created um, across time. Now we get to mapping the Airtable data. Let's quickly look at Airtable, what we have here. So this is the base we, are, we want to use, um, invoice base new. Um, if I take this out, we have like lots of uh, different uh, records here and, and an invoices table. Uh, and then we have a connected line items table on a line items field um, where basically uh, we can connect various products to an invoice record. We're going to limit this for the sake of this demo to uh, this record for now. And I'm also going to hide this because all we want to see is the create invoice button. And then that field where we see the created invoice appear. Back to Docs Automator. The first thing we do is we have to select the base. So as we said, like we want to use the invoice base new. So that's also what I'm going to select and this is going to load everything below here so the first thing is what's our primary table our primary table is where for our template like all these fields like all the fields basically besides the line items fields will come from right so that's our in our case our invoices table so that's what's already selected conveniently here and then the next thing is we want to set a field from our main table for document name so how shall this document be named in the end uh, in our case like i want this to be um named like ah name is good let's keep it like this and then the next thing is the attachment field so we want to set a field where the printed pdf will be stored so in our case this is this invoice pdf field next is to map our primary table fields so this is the fields from our invoices table. Um, we have all these different placeholders which are defined in our Google Doc template. And I'm going to uh, map all of these fields now here. So I'm finished mapping all my fields. Um, so a placeholder in Google Docs to a field in our Airtable main table or primary table. And now we get to the line item part. The line item is defined by a linked field on our primary table. So in our case, that linked field is called line items. I think we saw that before. So there we go. This is the line items field that we want to use. Um, this is already um, selected here. Uh, and then we can select a view. A view is 
on our link table. So in our case, we have the line items table and we have two views here, a grid view and a grid two view. And we could now select either of those. What that does is it's going to apply the sorting and filtering that you have on your view. So in our case, I give you the example, like we have three records here, like one times go with ball, three times and five times. Um, and then we can sort this somehow on our connected line items table. And it's only going to take whatever is connected to the record that we use and which is also in the view that we are selecting. So that way you can sort the order of how line items appear and you can also define which line items are going to appear. So in our case, we're going to uh, use the grid two, and then I'm just connecting here my fields from that line items table. Uh, unit is unit price and we have a total. So now we've mapped all of our data and we can go ahead and we can create a preview. I get 20 preview records here. So DocsML loads 20 random records from your Airtable um, primary table. Um, and I could select this now here, but uh, we are going to use this Modestine boys record. So that's also the one we filtered for here in our table. So I'm going to going ahead and uh, click on create preview. And this is going to take a moment. Um, and there we go, it's created. We can click on expand here in order to uh, view this bigger. We have like some watermarks in here. Um, but uh, you should be able to see these uh, details quite well. Um, and for me, this looks pretty good. Here you can see that only one line got printed from uh, our line items table, and that is due to the view that we've selected. So I'm just going to show you quickly if I um, change my filtering here just to allow for all of them. So it's basically not filtered. So it should now print all of the records basically that are that are connected because there's no filtering applied anymore on the view. So I'll go ahead, I can create a new preview in order to see whether that is actually the case. I'm going to wait for a small moment. And there we go, we can expand this again. And we see that now all the three connected records are printed. That is basically, all we have to do here, if we're happy and this looks good, then we're going to set the document creation requests up in Airtable. We have two options. We can use an automation script or we can use a scripting extension. Automation scripts basically run in the background in Airtable. So um, let me close this quickly. This runs in automations, right? So this can run on a certain trigger. Um, the uh, the only thing to um, remember here is that automation scripts only work on pro accounts because the script action is only available on Airtable pro accounts. The scripting extension, however, is also available on free accounts, but it always has to be initiated by the user. So let's do the scripting extension first. We're going to click on this, which copies the extension. We go into extension, we go on add extension, we go on scripting, add this. Um, there's a way we can select this, delete, and just insert what we've copied. And we go and finish. And now we could initiate the request from here, or we connect this button. So we can go here and we connect this, save. And now this is basically passing this record into the scripting extension. So let's go ahead and click this button. We want to create this invoice. Mm, and this basically sends the request now to the Docs Automator server and creates the PDF and then stores that PDF here in that field. So this happened now. Uh, we can look at this and there we go. We have our printed PDF without watermarks. Um, just a quick thing regarding what we get back from the API here. Um, basically, this is console locked here. So there's a PDF URL. This is actually where the PDF is stored. So if you want to save this PDF somewhere, so you can go ahead and adapt the script or you can reach out to me and 
Um, I'm very, very happy to help with that. I have also some um, uh, sample code for that already. If in Docs Automator you selected to save the Google Doc, then this would also return, in addition to the PDF URL, a Google Docs URL. And then you can save that Google Docs URL again somewhere in your Airtable base. Let's now learn how to use the automation script. So I'm going to copy the, we had done the scripting extension before, now I'm going to copy the automation script, going back to our Airtable base. I'm going into automations and I select a new automation here, but we need some sort of trigger. So the trigger we're using for this and these, this can be many things, but we're just using a checkbox now. Um, so um, I just call this create invoice checkbox. Um, and then we can go in automations and we can say when record matches conditions from our invoices table, create invoice checkbox is checked. That's sort of the automation trigger now, which is a bit, of course, like it's very similar to the buttons, we, the button we use, but it's just for demonstration purposes. And then we set a script here and we paste our code in here. And there's one thing that we need to do here. So with the scripting extension, it's just copy paste, that's it. Um, here, what we need to do is we need to define an input variable. So this here is a variable and is like, uh, there, there's like a red line now because basically it says it doesn't exist. So we need to create this. And the way we create this is we select and we, we add an input variable here on the left hand side. We call this exactly like this. So you can also copy and paste this just to be sure and paste. And then the value is the record ID. So this is basically how the record ID that was, or the record that was triggering the automation is passed into our script. And then we can go on finish edit and we can toggle this on. Yeah, and now we can go ahead and we can uh, check this checkbox. We can go in automations and we see that this is now running in progress. And if all goes well, then we are going to see the uh, invoice PDF appear uh, just as before when we used the scripting extension. So let's wait a little moment and there we go. There's our PDF. We can check it again. All looks good. And that's about yeah, and that's about it. That's how easy it is to automate your documents from Airtable using Docs Automator. I hope that uh, this makes sense, that um, you're all clear on uh, how this works. If not, please reach out anytime or visit the uh, knowledge-based documents. Um, until then, happy automating and speak to you soon.